Hi everyone, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. And uh, let's get into the analysis, looking at the week ahead. I'll zoom in a little bit. Here we go. So week ahead. Um, it says uh, fundamentally uh, it'll be a very busy week in the US with the earnings season kicking off, FOMC minutes, speeches and um, so speeches from several Fed officials and the inflation rate and retail sales data for September. In the UK employment, industrial production and GDP figures uh, data will be released and China will be published, will publish uh, inflation rate and trade figures. Elsewhere, investors will be watching for India's and Bank of Korea. And it goes into um, uh, some in-depth, uh, um, I guess, analysis as to why the uh, uh, you know the uh, the data uh, that we're that we're looking at or that trading economics is looking at. Um, will have the impact that it does. So I definitely suggest that you do go to Trading Economics and um, just click on tradingeconomics.com and uh, in the week ahead tab right there and you can have a read. Um, they've actually got quite a lot of analysis uh, here. Not obviously everything is is um, pertaining to uh, the, the pairs that we trade overall. But um, yeah, I think uh, there's going to be uh, definitely some market moving news, especially I think the... Um, the FOMC minutes, um, as well as the uh, CPI figures, I think is out this week. So let's uh, get into the um, the charts and uh, starting off on the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength uh, against the basket of currencies. And it's always best to to zoom out and see what's happened over you know the uh, past year, uh, year to date, or uh, at least uh, uh, one year. And we've just seen this massive uptrend driven by uh, really dollar strength. Um, and so uh, I guess fundamental strength, right? Because ultimately uh, when you're trading currencies, you're trading um, uh, one currency against another and uh, uh, value is really kind of driven by um, some factors like uh, GDP uh, inflation, which then sets uh, uh, monetary policy um, as well as risk sentiment. So um, I do have a, um, uh, a webinar uh, which explains it um, you know how to generate a profitable trade idea and uh, I will link it to this video at some point or it should be in the description box down below anyways dollar uh, looking at the dollar and um, probably continued um, dollar strength so the Fed officials won't relent on path to 4.5 percent and may move higher so drumbeat for hawkish uh, comments have pushed back on pivot bets so there was talks about um, the Fed possibly pivoting meaning that they may start to be a bit um, dovish on um, on the interest rate hikes depending on what inflation does and obviously the economy um, but we recently had the US jobs um, uh, rise while unemployment drops keeping the pressure on the Fed right so we had some decent numbers come out non far or the payrolls job payrolls uh, climbed uh, 263,000 last month, so jobless rate fell to 3.5%. Data reaffirms traders' bets for another big Fed uh, rate hike. And so uh, the labor market stayed strong in September as the unemployment rate unexpectedly returned to a historic low, leaving the uh, inflation phobic Federal Reserve on course to deliver yet another aggressive interest rate hike. So at the moment, the economy can support rate hikes which is decent there's uh, low low uh, unemployment and uh, jobs are being uh, still created so uh, with that being said um, you know there's going to be hikes now doesn't mean necessarily that you know the, the market is going to go you know to, to the moon right that doesn't it's that's in the short term you know nobody knows what is likely to happen but in the, in the medium to long term my thing is is that looking for bargains right so if you have um, price actually come down to an area where you know um, you want to get long so uh, ultimately you're using fundamentals and risk sentiment to determine your trading bias and then only look to trade um, you know the currency in that direction so ignore any you know I'm not ignoring any any supply zones I'm looking for pullback um, 
to uh, to demand zones. Now, this is you could consider this demand not the strongest area of demand yet, um, personally. But if it does, you know, go a bit higher, I think that is decent. Uh, uh, confluence because we're not trading the dollar index but um, decent confluence to look for when um, looking at other dollar crosses like the dollar yen dollar swiss if you want to be a buyer of those and if you know you see prices come down into this with these 110 area and then you start to see a uh, bullish price action on the dollar index um, then that's a decent um, uh, confluence for a buy because it will tell you that at least there's some sort of buying coming in um, on the dollar now no no which level is going to work exactly but um, uh, you know it's just a probabilities game as we understand but um, the probabilities at the moment are on um, you know any anyone who is going long on the US dollar so that's decent for a potential buy um, in the buy direction uh, looking at the uh, dollar uh, yen and the dollar yen uh, this is last week's analysis I was thinking that if prices do come down to this uh, 1 for 150 area I do want to be a buyer here the yen hasn't necessarily reacted um, in, in the face of intervention against the dollar uh, we had some intervention um, uh, in, and had uh, Bank of Japan intervention in in over maybe about 20 years and so um, thought maybe it would have sold off but um, fundamentally the uh, the, uh, the the yen is probably still one of the weakest currencies um, it does uh, tend to strengthen in times of risk off but even that this year hasn't been really the case and uh, you know I think that the, the market has really been um, focused on uh, the fundamental side of things when it comes to uh, exchange rate value you can see the dollar has really been um, strengthening against the Japanese yen but we do have um, and these lines represent from last week if you watch last week's analysis the fact that the uh, the Bank of Japan do not want the uh, Japanese yen to um, weaken further right because uh, ultimately there are lines in the sand when it comes to uh, currency devaluation so let's see what happens uh, there but I do think that um, if they high rates, then there might be a bit more intervention that has to come in at those levels to try to prevent, you know, the uh, the yen from devaluing um, too quickly. Moving on to the Swiss franc and uh, zooming out a bit, and we've got. Um, I'm not really too interested in this pair uh, fundamentally, but uh, nothing's really changed from last week. You do have um, some supply over here. Um, in terms of you know market high and then you know you've got the uh, you've got your market low uh, which is here market low really just understanding where a uh, uh, uh expensive and a bargain area is right so over the past um since uh what's that may 22nd uh the market has deemed the 10 uh uh one dollar um, area as an expensive area and the 93 area as um, a bit of a bargain for the uh, for the US dollar so this has been uh, expensive right exchange rate and this has been a bargain exchange rate and so we're heading back up to potentially another expensive exchange rate um, and with I think the dollar um, again the path of least resistance is currently to the upside and so any pullbacks into you know a zone maybe here uh, or anywhere down at these uh, lows that's not quite hidden supply but you got a wide demand zone there I think is decent for a potential uh, buy if you're looking to buy the dollar if you're looking to sell the uh, the Swiss franc then really up at the absolute highs would be where I would be looking but not really interested in this pair um, dollar CAD um, similar to the to the to the Swiss in terms of uh, not really being interested but if I was the path of these resistance is to the upside in a risk off environment the, uh, the dollar uh, does do better than commodity currencies like the uh, Canadian dollar so you can start to see obviously you know what's happening with the uh, with the dollar right so um, but where we are now we're still above the uh, monthly moving fair value so personally I prefer not to trade above uh, fair value right that's what moving averages are moving fair value in if you look, um, 
if you think about it in the context of value then you know what's expensive and what's um, bargain prices or cheap prices um, then um, you know you, you really want to look for you know at least fair value and not um, trade at you know market highs so as soon as prices would come down to anywhere around here possibly uh, there's no really demand zone here at the moment um, I mean, you could draw one there, but it's not going to be the, the strongest unless it kind of breaks to new highs and then a pullback would be decent. But I think the nearest uh, decent demand zone, if you're looking to buy the US dollar against the Canadian dollar, is going to be below fair value. <coughs> and then really down to the one, three, twos, that would be a decent pullback for a, a decent long trade. Uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and again, commodity currency is not doing so well against the US dollar. And you've got, um, yeah, I think probably uh, this area here is the nearest price, the 59, 60 cent area before you can really start to look for any kind of uh, short trades and buy the, the US dollar. Um, again, there is some supply here, but it's below the monthly moving fair value, so I'm not a fan of that. But if prices do come up to here, um, that would be okay for, I guess, a, a decent short trade if you believe that the US dollar should strengthen against the New Zealand dollar. The New Zealand uh, the bank, uh, the RBNZ, were actually uh, quite uh, hawkish in terms of their... Um, in terms of uh, their their monetary policy, and so um, and so yeah, uh, but I don't think it's going to really do any rally to any significant degree um, against the dollar. If it does come up here, then that would be a decent short as far as um, uh, uh, the the US the US dollar. Um, so um, yeah, New Zealand dollar. Any buyers? Nothing really. No levels that I'm keen on. Although zooming out, we are coming towards a 55 area. Um, you know, it's probably going to be a, a significant area in terms of just technically. But let's see um, whether that would be a buy in the future. I think in a risk-on environment, then that's going to be decent for a potential buy. But really not now, or unless the uh, um, CPI figures um, come out has uh, come out lower or the Fed start to do you know pivot and become a bit more dovish and I think that's going to be a very nice uh, potential buy for the New Zealand dollar uh, pound dollar I'm actually in this trade uh, got short at the 114.78 um, and uh, this has been a profitable trade here and uh, there was a supply zone there let's wait a little bit for it to come back up uh, to that zone in fact I think we could probably just draw this up up to the highs and so um, yeah we were looking at you know this area here um, uh, and it kind of touched the uh, that supply zone there and so really uh, a really nice trade so far profitable trade and I'm um, in one position now um, and hopefully it can kind of roll over there's actually calls for um, the uh, the pound to reach um, parity so um, I'll see if I can hold on at least to one position and see how far it can go and looking at the um, uh, the UK uh, where is my um, which uh, article did I want to uh, look at? No, it wasn't that one. It was, I think it was this one. No, 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 it wasn't that one either. Um, oh, maybe maybe I didn't have it, but um, yeah, I think I must have uh, uh, closed it. But um, basically, uh, long story short, the UK isn't doing so well. And um, I know the uh, government did a U-turn as well, which did um, you know rally the markets a little bit, and um, uh, but ultimately I think it's more to do with the fact that um, uh, the UK economy isn't doing great. Cost of living crisis um, is is worse. Energy crisis is uh, is really hurting the UK. Um, and uh, yeah, here here was something that I found as well. So UK faces deep long recession, and this was a Deutsche Bank economist. And um, so David uh, um, uh, Folkert uh, Landau, uh, chief economist at Deutsche Bank, sees a painful recession ahead for the UK that could last three or four quarters and says the pound is more likely to climb back to 115 than hit parity uh, uh, with the dollar. Um, 
uh, he speaks with France, yeah. So this wasn't the one where I saw one dollar, but um, strangely enough, I think one fifteens. Okay, so um, that was a bit of a strange one. One fifteens is probably where we are, uh, where we were anyway. We did actually hit the one fifteens, and that because that that was the twenty uh, seventh of September, all right? Twenty seventh of September was the. Uh, was the actual uh, date of that video did hit the 115s but for me um, so that's that has come true but um, again the latest reports really are saying that um, you know we could go back at least back down to the 103s and even beyond that so uh, that's the reason why I am short on the uh, the pound uh, so there we are if you do want to be a buyer of the pound for whatever reason then you do have um, a decent demand zone right there uh, moving on to the euro dollar I wanted to get short on this but uh, just wasn't an entry uh, around here so looking at that as a supply zone and looking at this as a supply zone that whole area um, prices just didn't quite come up into the zone otherwise I would have looked for a, uh, a nice short around here and it did roll over um, but we can't catch them all unfortunately but with the euro, um, you do have, um, I guess, a bit of hawkishness, and the ECB Nagel wants significant rate hikes to fight um, uh, high prices, and central bankers must be more persistent uh, than inflation. And the Bundesbank president Nagel comments in um, Swede Deutsche interview. So. Um, no surprise here that you know you do have some hawkish members of the European um, Central Bank who are um, who are looking to try to get inflation down by um, try to trying to raise rates as much as possible. But the problem for Europe is that they've just got lots of issues going on with with Russia and the energy crisis and cost of living and a cold winter, um, which if you hike too much will then um, you know has economic effects. Um, and so, you know, it's okay to try to hike, but um, if the economy is seen going into a deeper recession, then the market is going to price that in, rather than um, the value of the, um, the 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 rate hike. Because if the rate hike is seen as having a negative effect, then um, it's really not going to, you know, appreciate a currency. Although it typically does, but in certain situations, it doesn't. There's such things known as maybe a dovish hike. Um, or a hike that really um, may hurt the economy. So um, it's not all hikes are uh, uh, bullish or appreciate a currency. So my uh, position is still to the short side. Um, if prices do come up here again or even higher, then I will look for personally an entry. This is not a trade call, of course. This is just me telling uh, you what my um, my bias is and where we should be going and I've been short on the euro dollar for 18 months um, you know for pretty much the whole of 2022 into 2021 going on um, 1920 months you know we wish we were short from somewhere around the um, around February I think it was um, 2021 somewhere around here and uh, uh, that was the old bias since um, uh, uh, doing the fundamentals, and we can see how it eventually played out. Anyways, uh, looking at the Aussie dollar, and the Aussie dollar again in a risk um, off environment. Um, the dollar, the US dollar should strengthen, but also as well, the Australian dollar and the RBA came out recently and pretty much said that they uh, they they did a dovish hike, which is they didn't hike as much as the market expected. They were supposed to hike. Uh, 50 basis points, but they actually hiked uh, 25. So um, the market has taken that as being quite dovish alongside um, an environment where you do have, um, uh, where we're more probably risk off than risk on. The dollar being very hawkish, the US dollar being hawkish. So any pullbacks into that zone, although it's not the greatest supply zone um, for me, um, I wouldn't necessarily get involved in that, but you can. I personally, if I was looking to trade this pair, which I'm not really, um, but I understand why you would. Um, I would say probably the one, the, sorry, the 0 0.66 cent area um, is is really the area to look for any kind of uh, short trades. But if you do get um, um, the uh, any kind of dovish pivot from the Fed, um, then the Australian dollar could be a potential 
buy. Um, but I think it's probably going to be one of the last commodity currencies I'd rather buy the New Zealand dollar or even the Canadian dollar over the um, Australian dollar at the moment, just purely based off of um, their dovish uh, stance when it comes to um, uh, their monetary policy. Uh, Aussie yen, again, I'd probably expect this to uh, roll over. You've got some supply there you got some supply right here but I'd expect it to roll over a bit more because they are dovish on their hikes but if you are a buyer you want to be a buyer on the um, the uh, Australian dollar there is actually a decent level a nice level around here I think anything beyond the 91 area is a decent buy um, but sell trades from a daily perspective yeah you're looking at Probably that area there. <clears throat> uh, supply and then a pullback. So you'd look for move back up and then just go down into the intraday charts just to see you know what levels are, are there and then uh, look for any kind of sell trades if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen against the Aussie Australian dollar. Although it's not really a pair that I'm interested in currently at the moment. Um, and then finally, gold and gold on the daily time frame chart is um has made a bit of a move to the upside of course um a potential pullback is in order and i do think um that gold is a decent buy um not necessarily trading wise but uh, just from an investment perspective again this isn't fundamental this isn't definitely not invest investment uh, investment advice but um uh, from a trading perspective if you are long dollars right then uh, that is actually a decent area to look for short trades or you should have looked for short trades right there um, and uh, from a buying perspective I do think that this area here the, the 1620s is I think uh, is uh, decent for a long trade I think the uh, dollar towards the end of the year should start to come off the boil a bit and uh, weaken but it depends on obviously the data <coughs> as well as um, risk off fears and if risk off if gold does start to kick in as a risk off current um a safe haven and money does start to flow into gold then i do think that's going to be really nice um for a uh, potential buy anyways guys that's it for this week um i will uh, see you all uh, in the next video take care and speak soon